I had a fun time this morning. I made this uh, cutter for a clock I'm working on. And I used Robert Porter's book. Uh, this is a pretty good book. And uh, he gives you a, uh, a lot of other things besides just simply gear making. There's a lot of good interesting stuff in this book, including how to make this clock from scratch, making all your gear cutters and everything. Uh, but basically what he does, is he gives you a sheet like this that you fill out. You have to know how many teeth you want on the on your pinion and on your wheel and then you have to know the distance between the two and the rest and then you just go back to his uh, uh, pages of information and it's just simply adding and subtracting the math is quite straightforward quite simple you do need a couple of tools uh, his tools are made for a watchmaker's lathe but I uh, modified them to fit on my uh, Sherline but the first one is this little radius tool here not very hard to make and he gives you good instructions on how to do it for a watchmaker's lathe and then you just modify it so it fits on your lathe and then after you've done they've made the radius and made your cutter then you need this sign tool to uh, do the final cutting on the uh, uh, gear blank itself and uh, I don't remember if I get this from Porter or not and uh, allowed me to work between centers it's chamfered in here to hold the, the cutter quite well, uh, but it's made to hold these cutters. You can see here that this is our gear that we're making. We need to have a radius cut in it. This is our cutter. This is our cutter blank that we're going to have to cut a radius into it. So it's going to look something like that when it's done. And we'll need to use a 3 16 piece of high speed steel lathe bit and we need to get this radius on the end of it here. Before we do that we'll go downstairs and we'll grind a relief angle over here and a relief on this side. And I have my cutter set up so that it's got an 8 degree relief. So we'll cut this relief and then we'll put this into the radius cutter tool that uh, Porter designed and we'll cut this radius here. This is a brand new high speed steel blank and uh, we're going to use it for our, uh, uh, our bit. Uh, but you'll notice all the uh, grinding marks on there. Well we're going to be uh, cutting a polished surface so we want to make sure that we get those grinding marks out of there. And so I'm got, I got an India stone here, and we're going to just uh, slide it back and forth and uh, polish it with the India stone until you can't see those marks. And then we'll take it over to the uh, to the lathe and actually do the cutting on it. But we'll polish it up first get rid of all those little marks that are in there. Alright, we'll set the table to an 8 degree rake. Tighten the table up.
I've offset it. You can see it's been offset with feeler gauge to a predetermined distance by the, from uh, Porter's book. So now we fit it in here and we'll take it downstairs and put it on the Sherline lathe and we'll grind our radius. We have a, we've, I faced off the front of the stone. I put down some protection for the grinding paste. This is set at an eight degree for to re, do an eight degree relief on it. And we have a dial indicator to tell us when we're gonna be doing. The first thing we have to do is hold it like that and bring it in till the lathe bit just touches, just touches the stone. That's it there, we zero this out. Now we're gonna bring it away, 12, bring it down, slide our bit in, then tighten our bit in place. Slide it in until it touches the stone, tighten it up. Okay, so now we're ready to start grinding our bit. You wanna move it in very slowly. Go between zero and ninety-five. And there we go. There's the finished cutter. And right from there to right there, that's the cutting edge. Last step before we continue on, I just took this optical comparator and took a look at the radius under it and made sure it was uh, the right size and that it had the right shape. and good close-up way to measure it. So uh, everything checked out fine. Okay, there's a piece of one inch uh, water hardening tool steel. Cut our cutter, we've cut our rotor, our uh, radius on the end of our cutter. So that's all ready to go. We're ready to cut the radius into our, uh, our cutter blank. But we also need to put in this little angle here. There's an angle between here and the center line that runs down. It's called the flank angle. It's a very uh, small angle. And once again, Porter does all the math for you. Uh, and but once you get the flank angle, now he's got a tool call he calls a sign tool, uh, which will uh, present your cutter at the appropriate appropriate angle to cut that flank angle when you're cutting the, ra the radius. This is our sign bar tool that we built. I built this one for the Sherline. It's a little different from what uh, Porter does, but it's the same purpose. So you come up with his angle that you need. You take the sign of it. Multiply it by three, because that's three inches there. And you'll come up with a distance off. I Once again, I use feeler gauges. Put the feeler gauge in there nice and tight. Tighten this up. 
Okay, so now we have our angle. And we put our cutter into our holder here. Just leave a little bit of it out there like that. And then tighten it up. And there we go. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to go. I've got my sign bar tool in position. It's, the gibs are all nice and tight. I've got uh, dial indicators at either side here to make sure I keep my measuring uh, very precise. I'm doing a voiceover on this process because uh, uh, I wanted to explain what I was doing here. I've got the RPM up really high. Uh, high, much higher than what I would like, uh, so it wouldn't stall out on me. And uh, when I make start making my plunge cut here, it gets kind of hot and it squeaks a little bit. And uh, but then as you get near your uh, uh, the destination, uh, that last few thou, nice and slow. And then I reverse the cutter to the around the other direction, kept the same RPM, and uh, cut the backside the same way. Plenty of oil keeping the RPM up, cutting slow for that last few thou. And uh, we're getting in there and getting this all done. All right, we've got it cut. Now we're gonna turn it on pretty fast. Gonna polish it. Five micron with a piece of boxwood. We'll polish it up nicely. Okay, here's a look at our our cutter that we just, the sides of the cutter. I think this is a better look than what I get over under the microscope. So let me just give you show that. It's a little bit out of, it's hard to hold. There you go. Uh, first thing you do, you're going to be using a slitting saw. Bring it off, kiss off the top. Bring it down to the center line so that the bottom of the cutter is on the center line. And then with his worksheet, he gives you an offseat to put it down. And that, uh, that gives you a seven, day, seven degree rake, uh, radial rake uh, that gives you that uh, scooping action that you get with your teeth. Then after you've got them all cut out, and I rotated, I flipped the, I uh, flipped the cutter over in the holder, and I brought it off to the side, brought the cutter off to the side, and then cut the back relief on each one of the cutting surface, the cutting faces, and I did that by eyeball, but you'll see that. Uh, but that's what you're going to be watching next uh, as I do that. But this is just a graphic representation of that. And I have a brush here, and we're going to brush it up a little bit, clean it up. Okay, we're using map gas, and that's boric acid and alcohol that's covering the, uh, the cutter. We're going to bring it up to a nice cherry red, and then uh, it's water soluble. Alright, that's plenty sure. Here we go. And there we go. Alright, now we gotta test our our uh, hardness test, scratch test. And you can see it, it's just sliding all over the place. It's not 
cutting anything or doing anything. All right, here's our finished product. And now we're ready to cut a gear. Uh, that cutter just made this gear. I got plenty of uh, video of it, so uh, uh, there'll be a video out pretty soon on this. But there you go. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Bye now.